Hi, this is Vivek and today we are going to learn about Amazon Cloud Front signed URL and signed cookie concept which is essentially used for stream protection. Be it live stream or be it video on demand, it is very useful concept. Before you proceed further, we need to understand what exactly signed URL and signed cookie is. This is a way in which it is ensured that the URLs are not shared among the end users and it's not reused. You can define when it's going to expire. You can define the policy on which URL is going to be get impacted. Also, you can include IP addresses of end users to restrict the use of these URLs. Now, there are different use cases which we are going to discuss in this slide. In signed URL method, the delivery URL changes. The tokens or the secret hashes are passed as part of query string parameter in the URL. Whereas in signed cookie, the URL remains the same, but the secret tokens are exchanged using cookies. Now, to generate the signed cookie and signed URLs, first you need to create a key pair. It's based on asymmetric encryption concept. So while generating these tokens, you will be using the private key which is with you, and the CloudFront will validate these tokens using the public key it has. You can also pass the expiry values so that the CloudFront will be able to validate the URL's validity. You can also include additional components like IP addresses of end users. The signed URL method is typically useful for progressive download con concepts where a user is downloading single MP4 file or it's trying to download a particular file. Suppose you are protecting a set of file behind a paywall. You can protect these URL from being shared among the end users. With signed cookie method, it's capable of protecting multi-bit rate streaming, be it HLS, be it Dash, protecting those URLs. The beauty of this concept is that the URLs remains the same. Let's understand how HLS streaming works. So I have created a sequence trigram where you can see there is a client, then there is a CloudFront server, and then there is a media server from where the chunks and the playlist file, actually the media content is getting downloaded. The very first request in HLS is request for the master playlist file. I'm assuming that we are talking about multi-bit rate HLS streaming here, be it live or VOD, it's the concept remains the same. The first request will be for master playlist file, that is master.imp3 unit. The master playlist file contains the URLs of child playlist file. The subsequent request is going to be child playlist URL request. When the client gets the child playlist URL, it will contain the URLs for TS chunks. So only when the client has the child playlist URL, it will be able to request for the TS chunks, which are actual media file. Now, depending upon the bandwidth of the end user, the different child playlist file is selected, which is corresponding to appropriate bandwidth. Let's understand how signed URL works. The client will first request for the page, which may contain the playlist file URL or the download URL. In this example, we are going to take example of a media streaming playlist file, and we are trying to protect with signed URL concept. So the app, which return this page along with the requested index.php file, it also returned the URL of the media file. Now this media file is having the tokenized URL. So client will be able to request for this tokenized URL along with auth parameter in the URL format. The CloudFront will validate these requests. It will get the file from the media server, cache it or may not be caching it depending upon what the rule you have than the setup and then it will return this master playlist file to the client user or the end user. Now subsequently the client is going to request for the child playlist file. Now this master manifest file actually contains the URL for child manifest files. Since these child manifest files will not carry forward the tokens which were there in the master playlist file, we have to make sure that these are allowed to go through CloudFront. Otherwise, they are not allowed to go through the CloudFront protection. Hence, you are leaving the child playlist file and TS chunks unprotected. This may cause piracy. The end users will be able to extract these URLs and will be able to directly play bypassing the request for the master playlist file. To overcome this, 
in multi-bit rate streaming, be it Dash or HLS, Sign Cookie is recommended. So let's understand how Sign Cookie works. So in Sign Cookie, the tokens are passed from the server side to the client side or client side to the server side for validation as part of cookie header. The URLs are not modified. Hence, it's recommended for multi-bit rate streaming use case. So let's take this example where client is requesting for a page which contains the media streaming URLs. So request is for slash URL slash index.php. There is an app server sitting behind a CloudFront which is going to respond with this request and it will also serve the set cookie headers along with the streaming URL. Here the app server is responsible for setting the cookie. You may replace this app server with a serverless Lambda Edge solution. You can use Node.js, you can use Python to set the cookie here. Now in subsequent request, the client is going to send the master manifest file request along with the valid token or the cookies. CloudFront again will validate these requests and only if it is successful, then it is allowed to go for to the media server and then a response is received and it's served to the end user. Now subsequently, the client is going to request for the child playlist file of appropriate bitrate along with the cookies that is it already has. Again, CloudFront will validate this request and it get the response back. Now subsequently, the TS chunks of appropriate child playlist file is going to get requested. CloudFront will again validate these requests and hence finally these TS chunks are going to, going to get delivered to the clients. We are validating the request at each section, be it master playlist file request, be it child playlist file request or be it TS chunks. Hence, we are able to protect the entire sequence of multi-bit rate streams here. Now let's talk about these concepts as hands-on. If you go through the documentation written on the CloudFront developer guide, you can see plenty of example codes are also available for URL-based protection that is using signed URLs or you can use using signed cookie methods. I'm going to show you a demo where I have used some codes written in PHP and I have also hosted a page behind CloudFront to show you how the streaming protection works. The request flow diagram will look like this where end user is going to request for the stream uh, or the page. This page will be delivered by app server. It will set the cookie. It's matching on a particular path match and the media files are going to get delivered from the AWS Elemental Media Package. Now, typically in live stream scenario, you are making use of Elemental Media Package and Elemental Media Live, where an RTMP stream is pushed to Elemental Live and from there it gets packaged at AWS Elemental Media Package. And from there it's pulled by CloudFront and delivered to the end user. Let's see the demo page setup now. So I've created this page called stream.cdntest.in slash URL. If you capture the headers, you will see that the first request is going for the slash URL. When you request for the slash URL, the server is also serving a set cookie header along with it. These are nothing but the tokens. If you see, it's serving three cookies. One is CloudFront key pair ID. Second is the policy. And third is the actual secret. This key ID one can easily copy. The policy is nothing but the base 64 encoded policy string. But the secret which is here, you may not be able to decrypt it or do reverse engineering without having private key. Hence, your streams are protected. Now these cookies are set at the client side in subsequent request. So if you click on this play button, it's going to request for the stream. And then along with the request, it's going to send the cookie also which was served in the first step. So you can see here as part of request, it's sending all the three cookies and then CloudFront is validating at each step and then serving the 200 response. If the cookie is not valid, the CloudFront will stop streaming then and there itself. Let's try to rip this URL by doing a copy URL and then I'll paste in the browser. So I'm going to start a private session so that the cookies are not present here. I'll paste a stream and when you click enter, it serve it says a error page and if you see the response code received here, it's going to be a 403 response code, which is essentially nothing but the block page. So you are not allowed to fetch the stream directly without valid cookies. 
only if you have valid cookies then only you are allowed to get the stream content for this demo i have made use of this code i'm going to share this url along with this video so that you can refer to this code base and can reuse it it's simple php code which shows a page and it sets the cookie for a particular path match and it also serves the streaming URL and it says what it's going to be allowed along with the stream. The policy says what path, what expiry time, what condition, everything is there in the policy. Uh, I'm making use of canned policy, which is a default policy. It is, it is taking into consideration what file name are you going to request? What's the expiry time? If you want to use IP address of the end user as well, then you have to use custom policy. You can see here, I have passed three parameters in the create sign cookie function. One is the domain name along with the request protocol. And then the path, please note there is no starting slash here. It start with the path component and then finally the expiry time of the cookie. So this cookie is going to get valid for 300 seconds. Finally, let's see how the CloudFront setup looks like. So this is the plain simple setup I have created with multiple behaviors. I have two origins mentioned here. One is the app server. Second is the media packager from where the media content is getting pulled. I've created the behaviors where uh, the media content is going to get requested from the media server and slash URL is going to my app server. If you click on or if you edit and see this behavior in detail, this is unprotected non-cacheable page. But if you want to protect the media content, you need to enable sign cookie. I have enabled sign cookie here by checking this box called restrict viewer access with yes. And trusted signer I have selected self because it is the same account where I have uploaded the CloudFront key pair, which is used for encryption or which is used for validation of the tokens. Hope this concept is useful for you and you will be able to implement sign cookie in your application site Please refer to various documentations available on the AWS CloudFront official documentation, which is which is Amazon CloudFront Developer Guide. Uh, you can refer to different code bases, which is available here: PHP, Python, C Sharp, .NET, Java, or there are third-party code base also available on in the on the internet. Do refer to this documentation. Try to follow the step, and based on what I have explained here, you should be able to implement sign cookie concept. With this, I will conclude today's session. Hope this was useful for you. Please do subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any updates.